Hello, it's Matt here with Hey Press 2010, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use particles in Cinema 4D to create text. All right, so here's a small video clip of what you're going to be learning today. All right, so if we head on into Cinema 4D, this is a little screenshot, all right, and you can see that all these particles are forming. It, it sweeps along, and all the particles form the text. All right, and you can see that they slowly get smaller and it's all customizable you can change how far the particles come in to form the text or how small they are how many they are alright so if you scrub through you can see that it comes from left to right you can do it from right to left or anything and they all form alright so start off you wanna go make a new file alright um, if you see these lines here this is where it will render between so if you wanna make these bigger you wanna go up here to render settings output change the width to about 1280 by 720 okay and then the resolution to about 200 you can cross that off all right and um, mo graph mo text and this is the text which you're going to be using for the whole animation so make sure you get it right and um, I'm going to change the text to tutorial and um, you can change your font I think it always looks nice with quite a bold font but you know personal opinion so change the font um, actually I might go with quite a sleek font I'll go with this font um, it's quite thin as well so you can change the depth to about 70 or 60 I'll go 65 in the middle there you go so that looks alright um, and you see if you if you zoom in it's all divided all right? it's all divided into segments but these part the particles would be rubbish if this if it was this right so you want to make all these segments smaller so this is subdivision so if you crank up the subdivision you can see all the um, polygons get smaller so 15 alright if your computer is quite slow and you don't want it to take a lot ages to render I'll go with about 15 but I'm gonna go with 20 today because the smaller they are the better it is basically alright so angle this like this alright so you can scroll down um, change the intermediate points from adaptive to subdivide so this will make it smaller again which makes it neater alright and you can see how small these actually are um, and you can also see that they're quite long but we can change this later um, if you go to caps we can add some caps because they always look nice scroll up um, you can change both of them to fillet cap and whatever you do to the first one do to the second one so it looks the same on the back so I'm gonna go five and three that looks nice, alright. And it should like, look nice when you add colour as well. Um, if you go down, you can change the type from genons to quadrangles, which will make it different shapes. Um, regular grid, this will make it actually thinner, so change it from 10 centimetres to 5. And you can see it makes it a lot smaller, which makes the particles more precise. Um, and that's everything with the text at the minute. So, um, you want to go up to MoGraph, Poly Effects. And sorry if I'm going fast, guys. Just rewind the tutorial. But if you get stuck, just comment below and I'll help you. Alright? So, if you drag the poly effects up to the mo text, and you want to make this a child, so if you keep dragging it up slowly, you'll notice the arrow points down. And if you let go, this makes the poly effects a child of the text. So if you collapse it, see, it goes away with it. Alright? So I'm just going to name this text. Alright? So if you click on the poly effects, um, and you want to go to fall off and change the shape from infinite to, to linear okay and then if you go to transform change the x y and z to zero so from one to zero and the text will disappear actually well yeah alright so change the orientation from plus z to minus x alright and it disappears but not a worry um, if you click here you can line up this box, which is the poly effector, with the text. And you should be able to see some of the text still. So just put it in the middle. Alright. Go back by clicking this button. Okay. Um, you can zoom out a bit. And if you have the poly effect, poly effect selected, and you drag it along, this should build up the text. Alright. But if you zoom in, it looks pretty rubbish. Alright. Because it's just all like squares. So. What you want to do is you want to scroll down. 
spline, you want to right click this graph, go to spline presets, presets? What's it? Presets. Alright, uh, preset, that's the one. Go to square. So this should vary a bit, alright? And then you want to go up. I think this might be everything for this. Yep. So go in effectors. Make sure you have poly effects selected. If you want to go up to MoGraph, effectors, random effector, alright? So this literally does what it says makes it random all right so you can change the parameter the x y and z basically the x goes backwards so it'll spread it out a bit more all right the y goes up and the x goes along so you see that these are all come together a bit at the minute so if you change the x okay change the orientation and if you, if you want it to come in from a bit higher change the y axis so it goes up and you can just mess around with these until you're happy but i'm gonna have it quite small so it looks quite neat Right. So, zoom out. If you if you select the poly effector and you scrub through, oop, it should look quite nice. But I've still got to teach you the shadows and the lighting and everything. So I think this that's all right. Yeah. If you're not happy with it, you can go back change all the settings so it makes it nice all right and if you feel that there isn't enough particles or they're not small enough you can go and change the subdivision again all right it's all editable let's go back and have a look um oh yeah again right fall off so you see if i change this to nothing and i scrub through it literally it just appears all right and it's really boring but if i change the fall off to 100 then the particles becomes a lot more of them and a lot smaller and it looks really nice and especially when it's rendered it'll look lush all right so now you're gonna add light in stuff so i'll go to here go to floor you can add a floor um render all right so you notice that you want shadows but you want realistic ones so you want to go to render settings effects ambient occlusion change the contrast to about 30 uh, minimum, maximum real length even to 500. Don't render it at the minute because it takes ages. And we're going to add some textures to it. So create new material, or you can just double click here, shortcut. Just double click on the material. Um, I think I'm just going to go for a white material today. Um, if you want it to be light and it's not light enough here, go to luminance, and you can just put this down a bit. And if you go to texture here, click on the little arrow, and Fresnel, this basically just makes it more realistic. And it's the same for reflection. So if you check reflection, um, turn the brightness down a bit, go to um, texture, Fresnel, and turn that down to about, I don't know, about 40 or 50 or something. And you can uncheck specular. And if you drag this on the text, alright, so if you render this, should look quite nice. We still need to add some texture to the floor and stuff, but it's getting there. Alright, so you can scrub this through. There you go. Alright, so now if you press play, nothing happens. So, you want to learn how to get this to sweep through and build the text. So, if you drag all of this all the way to the beginning, so there's no particles showing, and you press O or keyframe, alright, and then you drag this. If you drag this all the way to the end, that means that this will sweep through really slowly. But if you drag it to around 60, it should sweep through relatively fast, alright? So you drag that at 60 with auto, chief, auto keyframe still checked. And then you want to drag the poly effects all the way. So all the text is built without any particles left, alright? And then uncheck this. And then if you skip back to the beginning, it should. If you click off here go through and build it but realize it is slow in here but when you render it out it will be fast all right there we go so if you put this about halfway okay so if you render this out that looks decent right so now you want to add some light but first of all you want to add some texture to the uh, floor right so I'm going to add a, a, a grey colour. There we go. Add some luminance. 
<coughs> um, turn off specular. Put luminance a bit high, actually. Yeah, there you go. And just drag this under the floor. And if you want the floor to be bigger, just go on the floor and go in coordinates, and you can just drag the X and the Y. I mean, the X and the Z even, and just make it bigger. All right. So this might be a bit too bright, but you know, we can always change it. So you see, with the ambient occlusion selected, that you get realistic shadows. And if we go back onto this, go and affect global illumination. Um, change this to low, just for it'll rent, just so it'll render quickly. And if we select this, there you go. That looks pretty nice. Right. So now you want to know how to use the camera. So basically how to get it to move. So if we go back to zero, I'm gonna start off with the camera over here. So yeah. Move this along a bit. Start off with the camera here. And then I'm gonna have it pan around. So if you put it back to zero, go up to here to the camera, go to camera. <clears throat> and if you go to cameras, use camera, and then just click camera. This will actually select the camera, and you can tell it's selected because it's got this white uh, box checked here, right? So you want to click auto OK keyframe, just like you did with the poly effector, with the camera selected. And if you put it to about 60, which is where this ends, and you just move the camera. So I'm going to move it over here. And this is what I'm going to have it like when it ends. Okay. And uncheck auto keyframe. Go back to the beginning. Now, it should pan slowly with the text. And this looks pretty nice. And I know it doesn't look much now, but when it's rendered, trust me, it'll look mint. Alright. And you can add other effects. Like, in my intro, you'll notice how the text all shatters. Um, if I get enough comments asking for it, I'll make a tutorial on that, and you'll learn how to do that. All right. So, if we render this out, I'll see if there's anything else we need to do. All right. And also, if you just think this this text is a bit plain and you want like a black outline, you can create a new material. Actually, you can just copy the material, the white material which is already on this. All right. So. Control C, Control V, and then click on it, and you can change the color to. And I'm gonna change it to a nice black color. All right, and you can uncheck luminance. Um, you can leave reflection on it if you want, but if you drag this onto the text, you'll notice that the text goes all black, and we don't want this. So, selection. If you type in R1, all right. Oop, not R2. R1. You'll notice that just the outlines of the text become highlighted. And this is this is an option, right? And it looks quite nice. It makes it makes the outlines nice and sharp. I'll wait till this renders so you can see it. Like I really like this because it looks quite nice. But you can change the R1 to a C1, and this will change the front of the text to black. Alright, but I don't really think that looks as nice, so I'm going to change it back to R1. Alright. So, I think we're coming to the end of this tutorial, and I think we're ready to render. So, um, let's have a look through these. Change these to medium, if your computer's okay speed, alright? Um, change the anti-aliasing from geometry to best. And think we're nearly done so frame range this is important all frames and um, yeah out of 90 save change the format to whatever you want I think I'm gonna go quick time movie options um, encoding h.264 uh, compression type even so this will make it like nice and small okay I'm gonna save mine to the desktop as tutorial Alright, so if you cross out of this and click the middle button, 
Um, this should start to render. Okay, and it's going to take a long time to render because if you look, this is just one frame and it has to render 90 of them. So 90 times this, that's how long it's going to take. All right. So thanks for watching. I'll put this video at the end so you can see what the outcome is. Um, if you have any problems at all, comment or message me and I will get back to you. All right. And if you want me to take a look at what you've done and say improvements or something, just leave a video comment and I'll have a look at it. All right. Thanks, guys.